now start a new application of NMR in structural biology that is with regard to the determination of the structures, interactions and dynamics of proteins. What are proteins? Proteins are polymers, they are built from amino acids. A typical structure of an amino acid is indicated here. So, this is the NH2 here, then there is a atom called as a C alpha carbon and to that is added a proton and then it is a R1 which is called a side chain and then it is a carboxylic acid group here. So, this is the basic structure of an amino acid. You have the a so called N terminal, it is an amino group and then you have the C alpha one carbon atom here. To this of course, you can have various different kinds of uh, groups attached which are called the side chains and then this is called a C terminal which is the carboxylic acid. Now, two amino acids can join together in this particular manner as it is indicated here, the OH group of the carboxylic acid and this one hydrogen of the amino group they get removed by the formation of a bond between this, this car carbonyl carbon and the nitrogen here and that is how you see this bond is formed and a water molecule is removed. Okay. So, this remains R1 and the another amino acid which is here amino acid 2 which has the side chain which is called as R2. So, the R2 is here and you have formed a bond here with the CN bond. This is the N terminal of one residue is now bonded to the uh, C terminal of the another residue and this is called as the peptide bond. So, the chain continues like this. So, we have here the OH group once more then of course, this carboxyl of this second residue and it can form um, a peptide bond with another residue with the uh, amino group of another residue. So, it will continue like this. So, therefore, this is indicated more system, uh, schematically in this. So, you have this COOH group here and the amino group here. This hydrogen and this OH group are uh, combined to form a water molecule and then there is a bond carbon nitrogen bond formed here. So, therefore, you have this CR and then you have this carbonyl, carbonyl 10 to the NH group. So, this is the uh, peptide bond. So, this group is called as the peptide group CONH and then you have the CHR, there is a CH here. These residues R, R can be the same or it can be different. So, therefore, they can have different kinds of uh, linkages between the various um, amino acids. Now, there are 20 different types of amino acids. What is the difference in them? The difference is in the R group, the difference is in the R group here. For example, this is called the L-alanine, this is called asparagine and this is called cysteine and all these are L groups. This depends on the configuration at the C alpha carbon. So, which way the groups are oriented here, the CH is indicated on the top, R1 is indicated here. So, which way these are relatively oriented that determines whether it is L amino acid or the other thing is the D amino acid. So, by and large in nature, we only have the L amino acids where the um, proton is on a particular side and the hydrogen side chain is on um, the opposite side. So, so, all these are L amino acids. So, these the residues which are indicated here, so uh, we have grouped them into different categories. So, you have the L alanine, L asparagine, L cysteine, L glutamine and then you have the glycine, the isoleucine, leucine and methionine. Okay. Then you have the phenylalanine, then you have the proline, you have the serine and threonine. So, all these amino acids are so called neutral amino acids. Neutral in the sense that after the peptide bond is formed, they do not have any charge anywhere. So, there is no protonation site. So, after the peptide bond is formed in the polypeptide chain, when you form a chain like this, so, what is the nature of these residues? The alanine has uh, the side chain is a methyl group okay? and then in this the um, asparagine you have the CONH2 group. These are all neutral although they are polar there is a, some polarity there. It has a um, uh, CONH2 group okay? and then the cysteine has an SH group here. Okay? The side chain H has an SH group. So, we call this as the from after the C alpha you have the C beta and then the SH group. So, this is the C beta carbon. From the C beta carbon we see the nomenclature afterwards. 
and the glutamine has this carbon here, another carbon, then you have the CO, CO and H2 group. So, there is a common thing between this glutamine and asparagine, they both have the CO and H2, okay. So, there is a CO and the NH2. In between, there is another carbon in the case of glutamine, whereas that is not there in the asparagine. And then you have the glycine, glycine does not have anything else, it only has two protons at the C alpha position there are two protons. So, this carbon here has two hydrogen therefore, there is a CH2 group there. And isoleucine, isoleucine has from here a 3 drip carbon branching out like this, there is a proton here, there is a carbon here and that carbon is actually a methyl group. That is a methyl group, all the protons are not drawn here, only the carbons are drawn. So, there is a carbon here and a carbon there. The structure there is a branching at this side at the C alpha there is a branching, it gets another carbon here and one carbon here and one carbon here. So, obviously from here it is clear that if you have a sticking um, stick just uh, staying by itself then it would mean that this carbon will be a CH3 group because it is a SP3 hybridized group, there are no other bonds indicated, it is only protons attached therefore, this will be a CH3 group. So, this has the CH3 group here and then this will be a methylene group the CH2 and then at the end of course, you have another CH3. So, the end if it is there is no other branching it is this it will be CH3 and the leucine and the leucine has from the C alpha this is the C alpha to the C beta and then the C gamma and there are two methyls there ok see the two sticking around here these are two methyl groups because the bonds are drawn only to the carbon carbon bonds are drawn. So, this will be a methyl group there are two methyl groups there ok and then for the methionine methionine it goes in this manner from the C beta. So, you have an SA there is an S here, but now S is connected not to a um, proton, but to a methyl there is a SCH3 unlike the cysteine, the cysteine had an SH here. Now, this does not have an SH, but it has a CH3 and it also has a methylene in between ok. So, there is a methylene group with the CH2 and then the SCH3. Now, these are aromatic this is phenylalanine, you have the NH2 from the C alpha, you have to the C beta and to the C beta is attached a phenyl ring ok. So, this is a phenyl ring. And now look at proline is an interesting structure and this is this forms itself within on the backbone itself from the closed ring all these are CH2, 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 NH one of the H of the proline is uh, the one which is normally remaining it actually participate in the closed ring formation. Therefore, in this hydrogen bond is formed and of course, this proton will also go and there will be no other proton remaining on the proline ring. So, therefore, this the proline ring in the polypeptide chain will not have any hydrogen at the nitrogen position. And the serine now has a CH2OH group in the side chain the CH2OH. So, this is the CH2 here and then there is the OH there. Okay, from the C alpha there is the CH2, the CH2 will be called as the beta proton. And uh, the threonine is similar to the serine except that you have a methyl, there is no proton there. So, there is instead of the proton there is the methyl group here. In the case of serine there, are, there is a CH2 and then the OH. Now, here you have the C and then there is there is of course, a, a proton there, one proton and then there is a CH3 group as a, attached to this. So, this is the these are the different structures of the amino acids. Now, all these are neutral amino acids. Once the polypeptide chain is formed, there is no charge anywhere on these ones. Now, so here we have the next uh, set of amino acids, these are called as uh, acidic amino acids, and these are here L tryptophan, tryptophan, tyrosine, and valine. So, these are also neutral because there is in the color coded manner. You can see tryptophan has an indole ring here, ok. At the C beta, at the C beta is attached an indole ring, ok. So, we have this is the tryptophan, and the tyrosine is very similar to phenylalanine except that it has an OH group here, ok. So, all these amino acids, so therefore, 4, 4, 8, plus 4, 12, plus 3, 15 amino acids are neutral in nature, ok. And then you have these white ones, this is the acidic, acidic, there are two there. So, these are uh, aspartic acid and glutamic acid. Why? Because in the side chain you have a COOH group and the COOH group is acidic. So, you have the CH2 then you have the COOH ok. The backbone COOH is different. It is the backbone COOH which participates in the polypeptide chain formation, but on the side chain you also have a COOH group. 
Therefore, there is chance of having a negative charge there because this will carboxylic acid group is there that will um, OH group will dissociate. So, you will form a negative charge there. So, you can have a negative charge in this, these are called aspartic, this is aspartic acid and it has it will be acidic. Similarly, the glutamic acid, glutamic acid is similar to this except that it has one more carbon in this here, there is a CH2, CH2 and then COOH. So, these two are acidic amino acids. Then you have the basic amino acids, there are three basic amino acids, the arginine, histidine and lysine. So, these ones have NH2 groups or NH NH2 groups in the side chain. So, you have the C alpha, C beta, then you have the gamma, then you have this delta, then you have the epsilon. So, you see this goes to the epsilon or xi. So, this chain is quite long, these side chains are very long. So, there is different, there are many carbons here in the side chain. Similarly, the, the histidine, histidine has a 5 membered ring in the here. So there is a 5 membered ring, there are 2 NH, there are 2 nitrogens, and one of them has a hydrogen there. So, this also can get protonated because of the nitrogen they can get protonated. Then when it gets protonated it forms a NH3 or NH wherever the charge is there it will produce a positive charge. The acidic one produces a negative charge, the basic ones produce a positive charge. And this is the lysine, the lysine has so many carbons on the side, on the, on the side chain. This is the C beta, from the C beta you have the gamma, delta, epsilon, uh, zeta, then you have the NH2 group there. So, all of these are very distinctly different uh, amino acids. Typically all these are denoted by one letter codes, you can have the three letter codes as well as the one letter codes, alanine, asparagine, cysteine, glutamine and these are represented as A, N, C, Q, uh, C, Q like that gly, I, L, M and then you have F, P, F is phenylalanine and you have the P is proline, S is serine, T is threonine, then your W is tryptophan and Y is tyrosine, V is valine. Valine also has two methyl groups here, there is a C beta and directly to that is attached the two methyl groups in this. And uh, arginine, uh, so this is uh, R represented as R, then histidine and K, okay. So this is the structure of the various 20 different amino acids. Therefore, clearly the polypeptide chain can have a great variety of uh, sequences and um, depending upon the combinations, what is the nature, how long is the polypeptide chain and which amino acid is appearing where, how the structure is getting formed. And that determines the first level of the structure of the proteins and that is what is indicated here as the primary structure of the protein and these are like beads, these are like beads on a necklace. So, each one of these bead is amino acid, okay. These are all amino acids. There can be many diff many amino acids, you can have proteins which have 100 amino acids, 200 amino acids, 1000 amino acids. So, various kinds of um, uh, amino acids are present. Now, each of these amino acids has a certain degree of um, um, degrees of freedom with respect to how they are oriented with respect to each other. So, in the entire chain, there are many different possibilities of orientations of the individual amino acid side chains with respect to the previous one and the following one. So, depending upon you get some regular structures and these regular structures will show up when you have a large chain like that going with certain preferences for the certain relative orientations of the individual side chains along the backbone, then you get different kinds of structures. These are classified in a rough way like this. This is called as the alpha helix, so it goes in a helical manner and these are called as the beta sheet, it looks like this. We will look into this in, in, in greater detail soon and this is a kind, these are called as secondary structures. This is called as a primary structure and this is the secondary structure. You have two kinds of basic secondary structures, alpha helices and beta sheets. There are two types of beta sheets that we will see very soon and then these ones relative orientations of these secondary structures in a protein, the protein can have partially in some places it can have this structure, some places it can have this structure. So, therefore, you can have a combination of all these secondary structures in a large protein and that is called as a tertiary structure. The tertiary structure basically represents the three dimensional structure of the protein. So, you see you can have a the beta sheets or you can have a helix here, the helix is indicated in this manner here, you can have many helices here, then you can have beta sheets, okay, combination of all of these will form the tertiary structure. 
of course the chain can loop here and then those ones will be called as, uh, as the turns. In a particular molecule there can be combinations of alphas and the beta sheets and there can be connections in between and those are called as the loops. Okay. There can be turns there these are also called as turns they are specific geometry of the relative orientations of the individual amino acids. Then you have the quaternary structure you have a well folded structure like this then can multiple domains there can be more of such ones we can get associated because of various interactions and these are called as quaternary structure. Therefore, the protein structures can be categorized into four different types. So, you have the primary structure which is the basic thing which is which determines the, uh, the composition of the protein what all amino acids are there whether it is the basic protein or it is an acidic protein or it is a neutral protein or it is a hydrophobic protein because certain amino acids you see as you have seen have various methyl groups aromatic rings they all constitute to the structure the physical characteristics of the amino acids. The physical characteristics of the amino acids um, pass on their nature to the entire structure of the protein and because of that they also define the energetics and then they cannot different orientations and then you will have a different kinds of folded structures and then these can get associated through various kinds of interactions. They may be charge charge interactions or hydrophobic associations different kinds of associations can happen and that will constitute the so called quaternary structure. Okay. So, let us look at this in somewhat more detail. So, we have here the primary structure as indicated there. So, you have different kinds of um, uh, chains which is the so called carboxyl end this is the end terminal the chain is running like this of course it has various uh, loops going around and different kinds of interactions can happen there. Okay. So, and then we show here what is the nature of the helix in little bit more detail if you see the helix the chain is running the end terminal is on this side say NH C alpha CO NH C alpha CO NH C alpha CO and that is the end terminal. So, it goes from the end terminal to the C terminal like this CO NH. Okay. So, now you see there are why is it taking this sort of a structure it is taking this sort of a structure because this is stabilized by what are called as the hydrogen bonds. So, you look at here these are the hydrogen bonds the NH of the um, of this amino acid is hydrogen bonding to the carboxyl oxygen of this. This is the NH group here and there is a hydrogen bond between the carboxyl group of this, this amino acid. This comes at a certain distance after it is taken a certain turn here the helix this forms a helical hydrogen bond. This provides a stability to it likewise every amino acid this, um, this carboxyl group will be hydrogen bonded to the next of somewhere there. And similarly, so this next amino acid here is hydrogen bonded to the carboxyl of here. So, this continues. So, every curve in this whole chain every amino acid uh, amide uh, hydrogen is hydrogen bonded to the carboxyl of one of the, re of the residues in the polypeptide chain. So, this is called as a turn of the helix. Okay. So, this is the turn of the helix and it continues like this and in the turn the total rise of this is typically about 3.66 uh, angstroms three, there are 3.6 uh, turn amino acids in a turn 3.6 amino acids in a turn. So, there can be different kinds of turns there are called as 3 amino acid turns they are called 310 helices and that determines how many what is the size of this ring if you consider this as a total ring what is the size of the ring you can define the size of the ring there. Then you have the how are the beta sheets formed here you see this is the within the same chain a fourth residue is actually forming hydrogen bond with the amide group of this and that forms the uh, hydrogen bonding scheme. Now in the beta sheet this is uh, it is slightly different ok now look at what is this chain how it is running here. So, the chain is running NH C alpha CO NH C alpha CO NH C alpha CO. So, this is the chain running like this this is from the N terminal to the C terminal. Now, the lower chain is actually uh, going in the opposite direction here NH C alpha CO NH C alpha CO NH C alpha CO and so on. So, the chain is running in this manner here therefore, this is called as an anti parallel beta sheet there are two chains which are running in opposite orientations and then these are held together by these hydrogen bonds. This NH is hydrogen bonded to the carboxyl of 
uh, and in residue in the other strand this is one strand this is the other strand and the two strands are held together by hydrogen bonds like this. So, and they are perfectly positioned to form this sort of hydrogen bonds NHCO and then the NHCO here like that it continues. So, there are very regular intervals these many hydrogen bonds are possible this forms the one of the beta sheet this is called as the anti parallel beta sheet ok. There can be others also. So, the tertiary structure here this is the helical portion is shown in this this is the helix ok the arrow comes here from here you see it comes and points to the helix here this is the helix and this portion is pointing to this here. So, it is turns here therefore, when it turns like this the change in the direction ok one is going on from here to here then it goes from here to here. So, there is a change in the direction and therefore, this will form a beta sheet the same thing is indicated here this portion of the chain is supposed to be forming a kind of a helix whereas, this portion of the chain is actually there a chain is turning here and then of course, you will form hydrogen bonds in this and that is typically indicated in this sort of a structure ok. Now, you see there are certain things which are hanging here what are these because the chain has to fold and even here if the chain has to turn here then something is here what is this what does this correspond to these are called as turns. Okay. Now, there are two kinds of turns. So, the chain goes in this manner which way the chain is running we can look at this. So, this is the C alpha C O N H C alpha C O N H C alpha C O N H C alpha C O. So, there are 4 amino acids here 1, 2, 3 and 4. These 4 amino acids are forming a turn and the carboxyl of the uh, first amino acid for carboxyl of the first amino acid residue is hydrogen bonded to the NH of the fourth amino acid residue. See it is turns like this and comes back here and in this situation this NH is coming close to this carboxyl it forms a turn. Notice here the carboxyl of this the second residue is pointing inside here and the NH is pointing outside. This is one configuration this depends upon as I said depends upon the relative orientations which are determined by certain certain kinds of torsion angles I will describe a little bit uh, later very soon and in this case this is called as the type 1 beta turn this is called as the beta turn and this is called as a type 1 beta turn. There can be another way this turn can happen and in this it is the same hydrogen bond except that the configurations here is somewhat different. You see here the R H proton the hydrox the alpha proton is down here whereas, the alpha proton was up there and the two things are in the same orientation and the carboxyl is oriented outwards and here the carboxyl is oriented inwards and the NH is outwards the NH is inwards here. Similarly, this R 3 and this portion is, is, is roughly the same as that it is the differences are occurring in this. So, and this amino acid residue has a different or relative orientation with respect to the others and that makes the configuration in the loop different or we also call it as the conformations is, is different uh, and because of that the same hydrogen bond is found even so here. So, this is called as the type 2 beta term ok. So, now you see here this is more explicitly indicated what makes these dif different orientations and what is shown here is there are certain torsion angles indicated here. This residue if this residue is I this is the residue I plus 1 this is the residue I plus 2 and this is the residue I plus 3. This is I the chain is running like this NH C alpha CO NH C alpha CO NH C alpha CO and continues like that. So, if I start this from this residue is I plus 1 this previous residue is I NH C alpha CO this is residue I and this is NH C alpha CO this is residue I plus 1 and there are two torsion angles indicated here. This actually determine what is the relative orientations of these groups these torsion angles they are called as phi and psi we will describe more about it these are called as the torsion angles phi and psi. Similarly, this amino acid also has this phi and psi torsion angles and this define the relative orientations of this groups these 4 atoms this nitrogen this uh, C alpha C O and this nitrogen. What are the relative orientations of this a rotation around this can change the orientation of this position of this hydrogen and with respect to this and that is what um, determines all of this. So, 
like therefore these two torsion angles which are called as the phi and psi these are there for every amino acid residue and that determines the variety of structures that can be formed by different combinations of this phi and psi torsion angles. Okay. And when this turn the chain turns around and comes back here you see this distance is roughly about 7 angstroms. Okay. So, one can calculate this various kinds of structures depending upon what is the configurations of this. If the hydrogen bond has to be formed, this hydrogen bond has to be formed, this puts the limit as to how much should be the distance because from N to O this distance cannot be more than 2.9 angstrom about 3 angstroms 2.8 to 3 angstrom this nitrogen to this oxygen will be about 2.8 to 3 angstrom that defines the hydrogen bond. And once you have that this is the C alpha C alpha distance this is the C alpha carbon this is the C alpha carbon this distance is approximately 7 angstroms. Okay. Now we talked about the anti parallel beta sheet this is the anti parallel beta sheet. There is one more possibility of a beta sheet and that is called as the parallel beta sheet. How does this work? Now you see you consider the two strands this we already saw consider these two strands NH C alpha CO, NH C alpha CO, NH C alpha CO. The chain is running like this from left to right and here also NH C alpha CO, NH C alpha CO this chain is also running in the same direction. Whereas here the two are running in the opposite directions here it was running NH C alpha is going here the bottom one is going in this direction and here the two chains are running in the same direction. Okay. And yet of course the hydrogen bonds are possible this NH now hydrogen bonds to this oxygen. Here the hydrogen bonding scheme is much more cleaner they are straight and of course then it is uh, uh, more, more stable and here of course they are slightly tilted there. So this NH is hydrogen bonded to this oxygen this NH is hydrogen bonded to this oxygen. So this will continue like that alternately. Okay, like here this NH to this CO, this NH to this CO, this NH to this CO, this NH to this CO and similarly here there is one there is a shift in the resistor. Okay. So therefore you have this uh, CO to this NH, this CO to this NH and this will of course go further down this okay. this is called as the parallel beta sheet. Now in a given protein structure you can have combinations of these the chains can be running in a particular directions. So here, here the chain is running like this okay, NHC alpha CO, NHC alpha CO the chain is running like this and it may have a turn somewhere and comes back and then it, another portion of the chain runs like this. So this is NHC alpha CO, NHC alpha CO therefore here it forms a parallel stranded uh, anti parallel beta sheet, anti parallel beta sheet this portion is anti parallel beta sheet. But again the chain may turn around somewhere and comes back and it goes once more here. NHC alpha CO, NHC alpha CO. Now this direction is anti parallel to this orientation, the middle one, the, it can again form hydrogen bonds. Therefore, this is once again an anti parallel beta sheet. So, these two anti parallel beta sheets are adjacent to one another, but then of course this chain may go somewhere and then again you have you may have another chain which is running parallel to this NHC alpha alpha CO, NHC alpha CO, and so on. Now this chain is running parallel to this. So therefore, this beta sheet which is formed here is the parallel beta sheet. So such kind of a sheets can be formed in protein structures depending upon the relative orientations of the different helices or the, or, or the chains you can have anti parallel beta sheets or parallel beta sheets you can have combinations of these it can form a huge sheet like structure as a result of this and this will be extremely stable. Of course, this will be determined by the uh, side chains which are present the side chains will dictate what sort of a structure that can be formed and that will depend upon as I said the torsion angles the phi and psi torsion angles. And this of course is a very crucial parameter which generates a variety of uh, protein structures. Okay. So I think we can stop here.